very good morning to you. Welcome to Prime Time Morning this Tuesday. A biotechnology firm in Singapore is claiming a revolutionary discovery. A cell research corporation says it has found an alternative source of stem cells. So far, the most versatile stem cells are found in embryos, and the process of harvesting the cells has been controversial in some places because it involves destroying the embryos themselves. And now researchers say the outer lining of the umbilical cord is a rich, rich source of stem cells and is more easily accessible. So the throws up many questions that uh, we're about to put to the two men responsible for the discovery, Dr. Ivor Lin and Dr. Fan Tuan Fang from Cell Research Corporation. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning to both of you. So explain to us uh, what this first discovery means, actually. We've talked about umbilical cord blood, now we're talking about the outer lining. How uh, significant is this? Well, it's, uh, it's very significant because we've finally come across a, a source of stem cells which has no ethical problems the yield of stem cells which comprise both epithelial and mesenchymal stem cells is extremely high. What uh, does that mean? Uh, that means we can, uh, the lining cells uh -huh. make up these epithelial cells okay. and the cells which make up the bulk of organs uh -huh. uh, are the mesenchymal cells. Uh, what is the mesenchymal is also the, the epithelial or the outer edge? Outer no, it's, the, it's a deeper layer. Deeper layer, right below the top. Epithelial is above and mesenchymal is beneath that. Okay. The epithelial cells make on surface mm. tissue, like skin, cornea, intestinal okay. so surface it, tissue. Yes. An analogy would be this yeah. the epithelial, the mesenchymal. Yeah. The, the big M is right below it. Just below yeah, that's just right. Below. Yes. Right. And mesenchymal cells make like bone cartilage, a dermis of the skin. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you're taking is from those top two layers? Of the umbilical cord. Of the umbilical cord, yeah. correct. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very, very rich yield and we've been um, uh, able to extract tons of cells under the auspices of uh, Dr. Fan, our chief scientist. What makes this discovery so important as compared to the other sources that we've seen so far? Umbilical cord blood, we also have, uh, you know, embryos as well. Mm -hmm. How does it um, compare? Fine. Um, because, you know, actually when we started, uh, we tried to look for the new source of stem cell which is, um, have less or no ethical issues. So we start first with placenta and then this one day we got uh, one bottle of placenta and one bottle of umbilical cord and I tried with placenta and found it's quite messy, very difficult to, 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 to process, to mm -hmm. wash and then a lot of blood contamination and so on. So I look at the umbilical cord lining, we found it very clean, very beautiful and very easy to dissect, easy to wash, you know, to decontaminate and uh, easy to, 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 to isolate the membrane because we are skin people. So we think just uh, in, in terms of um, lining membrane, have con they must contain the epithelial cell and mesenchymal cells. Mm -hmm. So we apply the cell cancer technique and then we get it. So the significant is just, you know, we have a lot of cells. The first thing umbilical cord about 30 to 50 cm length. Mm -hmm. and diameter is about 1 cm to 2 cm uh, uh, diameter. So when open up, you have a huge uh, surface tissue of umbilical cord, and that's why you can harvest a lot of cells, because mm -hmm. one of the um, disadvantages of uh, using the like bone marrow or cord blood to, to have harvest muscarmon cells is very low yield. It's not very high uh, harvest, so in sort of cell, you have a lot of tissue, mm -hmm. and therefore you have a lot of cells. It's a high yield. Dr. Fan, yeah. <coughs> sorry to interrupt you there. My voice sure. is going here as well. <coughs> Excuse me. But let's talk about yields. When you take yeah. a look at one embryo and one umbilical cord, you get the same yield of stem cells? Uh, no, we don't compare with embryos, actually, because we here we compare with, um, with uh, another source of adult stem cells. Mm -hmm. like a bone marrow or cord blood, because embryos, embryonic stem cells are considered the most powerful in stem cells. Uh -huh. Uh, and right, most so promising, but uh, you know, involve a lot of ethical issues. Right, and we know about that. Yeah, so but we if we were to sort to of avoid. understand the equivalence that you mm. get from Just to give you an example. Yeah, exactly. If you have uh, bone marrow, you, mm -hmm. you will get one stem cell out of 10,000 cells extracted. Okay. Mm. For umbilical cord blood, it's yeah. one stem cell per 100,000 right. uh, mm -hmm. cells extracted. Mm. So our yield is in excess of 90%, i.e. 90% of all cells extracted are stem. Mm. So that is where we have uh, this high yield factor we're well, the, talking about. Dr. Lemon, you bring that up then, can you tell me what the comparison is with embryos then, since you know that figure? Uh, well, that's different because for an embryo up to day 14, they actually uh, sacrifice the uh, embryo uh -huh. um, to uh, extract certain cells uh, from the developing uh, embryonic sure. cell mass. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that is also a little bit variable. I think uh, yeah. the count, uh, it's about what, they take about what, 14 to 20 cells, and it all depends. They take a little core uh -huh. of the cells, 
And, uh, but at any rate, there are problems because it has to be achieved before 14 days. It yep. still involves the sacrifice of an embryo. And they're still a little bit downstream from the ultimate stem cell is which mm -hmm. when, when the sperm reaches the egg and that's like the first stem cell from which all other cells are born, mother of all cells, so to speak. How far are we into this research? We've managed to differentiate uh, these stem cells into cells of the skin, cells of bone, as well as fat cells. So uh, we've managed to do a few. And you, if you can imagine, my arm has skin, underlying surface of mm -hmm. fat, and bone. Of course, we don't have the architecture yet, but at least the basic cellular elements have been differentiated uh, using this technique. And uh, what I want to mention as well is because of the high yields, this will be a very, very logical alternative for banking in the future. So at the current time, we have cord blood banks, and uh, we can easily implement uh, banking of the umbilical cord lining because it is in such abundance that you can have uh, essentially all cells for all potential problems which might arise from either tissue loss, disease, or, uh, or, or tumor. Okay, so although we didn't make a comparison on the quantity with uh, the embryo oh, yeah. itself, we did make a comparison on bone marrow. What about quality? Perfect quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quality is very high indeed. And the beauty is when you can extract so much cells in the first pass, we don't have to keep growing more cells from the original cells. And therefore, we don't have the problems, the drop-off from senescence. That's when the cells grow old. Because when they grow old, they start to mutate. And when they start to mutate, they could transform, even transform yeah. into mm -hmm. new plastic yeah. cells. When can we see clinical trials being started? Um, we aim for, actually now in collaboration with um, a few groups in, in, in India, you know, in terms of banking. So we, we think, as uh, Dr. Lim said earlier, we think it's make a lot of sense for banking because you take a, a, a umbilical cord anyway, right. so you squeeze out the blood, and then in, they did not, you did not know about uh, lining yet, so they dump the umbilical cord. Now we come in and say, okay, we process a new sort of stem cell for you, and then we do the banking. And next step we do probably we target for the wound healing, which is our area, and and it's quite um, wound quite healing, wound healing like so, chronic wounds, like that uh -huh. big wounds and burns wound and things and like that. And clinical trials, when can we see them being started? Uh, we target for next year. Next yeah, year in uh, in first very near future. Yeah, in near mm -hmm. future. We're just waiting to clear the phase one clinical trials, yeah. and after which we will be able to yeah. apply these directly to human beings. Um, yeah. What are the possible challenges you could face when it comes to uh, uh, you know storing the umbilical cord outer lining? Um, the challenges are actually uh, very few mm. because the storage method is virtually the same as that of storing umbilical cord yeah. blood. Uh, and the, it is the processing which is uh, challenging uh, and that is where we, have, we are patent protected. But what is actually uh, quite unique about the process as well is we do not use serum to mm. grow the cells. Mm -hmm. So we can take away risks like uh, mad cow disease or bovine spongiform encephalopathy. And additionally, because in Singapore, at least mo most mothers are screened for HIV and Hep B, that really does mean that you know exactly what potential diseases these cells might have, mm -hmm. which then, of course, expands the, uh, the boundaries for transplantation in the future. Where are you getting the money for this, and uh, what does cell research do to get its money? <laughs> cell research is a purely privately funded um, uh, company and um, uh, we have um, investors um, who are adequately funding us at the current time. Um, this uh, first discovery, there's a lot of international interest in it, and a lot of mm -hmm. medical experts looking to uh, this, if we could call it a revolutionary uh, discovery. How are you handling this uh, hype and uh, you know, attention on your studies and research? Well, we're still keeping our day jobs, but it's <laughs> a lot of work, uh, it's a lot of planning, and I think uh, the way ahead really is to uh, sit the scientific and business uh, sides down to project over the next five, ten years and uh, in the meantime get the word out and get our names known and so get the interest in so we can plan for the future with many options. All, All right. right. Mm. Thank you very much for that interview. Thank you both. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and we've been speaking to uh, Dr. Ira Lim and Dr. Fan Tuan Thong from Cell Research Corporation on their discovery that outer lining of the umbilical cord is a rich source of stem cells. And that is the latest in home news. News continues on primetime morning in just a moment. And do remember, even if you're leaving the house, no worries. You can still listen to us on TV Mobile 89.3 FM.